seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everybody. You're a year older. Wait. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's not. You're rushing a little bit. Oh, it's not even New. It's not New Year's yet. No. It's not even Christmas. Super awkward. It's not even Christmas. KJ, where's your head? Oh my gosh, you guys. Well, guess what? Whatever time it is right now, it's time to worship. You know what that means. If you are sitting down in a chair, you need to stand up. There's some space right there that I think could be filled. There's some space right there that I think could be filled. Fill it up. You can sit next to our friends that are on the subs so that you can like, can you feel the vibrations just going through your body and you're ready to like move? Yeah, I love it. You guys, if you're here in the room, welcome. If you are online, Welcome, hi, hello at Rochester, Lakeville. Wyzetta, Kale, I love you. You know who you are, baby. What's going on Special wherever show. and how you are watching, we get to be here together. And that's super awesome, right? Yeah. Woo! Hey, my name is KJ. I show up here sometimes. You guys know Madison. She's super duper cool. And every single week we start off our services by singing some songs that remind us of who God is and what he's doing in our lives. And we sing a song just like this one. So here we go. Um, we're going to do worship, but we're going to try to make it Christmas. Here, let's go with me. I'm going to say, uh, like, ho, ho, ho. Say, ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, you got it. Say, ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, there you go. Ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. You have the right idea. She's got Christmas lights on. It's awesome. Let's go.
almost fly There's no hiding from your grace I can't deny your heart from mine And it's unrelenting I was on the edge of deception Caught up in my own hesitation Until you love took over me yeah. So I Jesus, we're so thankful for who you are and the way that you love us. Jesus, would you be with us? Would you just make yourself known to us? Would we have so much fun? Would we learn more about you today? Jesus, we give you the rest of our time together. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Ground Zero, go ahead and take a seat. And while you're doing that, please give a warm welcome to your student pastor, John Sullivan. Ground Zero, what is up, Ground Zero? I wish I'd known that it was Red Beanie Day because I would have worn mine, but we didn't, co- yeah, I didn't coordinate. It's fine, I'll get over it, next time. Uh, hey, Ground Zero, welcome. I am so glad you're here. If this is your first time tonight, if you are brown new, brand new, <laughs> if you're brand new, welcome. Welcome to you, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad this is a place that you showed up and you're hanging out with us tonight. Here's what we do, if you're like, what's going on here? What's, what's this place about? We do a couple fun things. First, we hang out in the lobby. We play Nine Square, we hang out at the cafe. Did anyone try to beat Aaron at Nine Square? The guy was like, kind of like Goliath. He's like 25 feet tall. Yeah, yeah. 
Good luck. You're never going to beat him. He's too tall, okay? Uh, and then we come in here and we hang out and we get to worship like we just did with an amazing band, the Red Beanie Club. And then, uh, then we get to hear a message just for you, just for middle school students, people that are your age, that are going through the problems you're going through, talks about your lives. And then uh, we head out to small groups and small groups is the best thing we do here. Like if you got to do one thing, make sure you make it to small groups because it is a place that you can hang out with friends and process through all the stuff you're thinking about and just get to have fun and be with people who are your same age, same grade. Uh, but last and not least, we also like to have a little bit of fun here every single week. And does anyone remember how we do that? I forget every week. Someone's got to remember. Stage game. You got it. That's it. Stage game. And it is time for a stage game. And guess what? Guess who's playing tonight? Everyone is playing. Yes. So if you are here, take us to go ahead and stand on up. You're in. You're playing. You're in. You're you're qualified. If you're here, you're qualified. If you like to have fun, you're qualified. If you're yeah, that's everyone's qualified. Noah, are you qualified? Qualified. Good. Noah, qualified. Uh, all right, so here's how the game works. Who here likes Christmas? Oh, there's some energy. All right, just had to say the word Christmas. Uh, who likes Christmas movies? What is your favorite Christmas movie? Yell it out. No, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Elf. Elf, By okay. Far. Elf is hard to beat. I'm Absolutely. a big Elf guy too. Yeah, I like. I actually love the new animated Grinch too. I'm real into that one, so. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen that one yet. You haven't seen that one? Oh, everyone say, boo, no, boo. Oh. No, I'm joking, sorry. Don't, we don't boo people up here. Uh, all right, hey, here's how the game's gonna work. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds. So there's gonna be a scrambled Christmas movie that comes up on the screen. It's gonna be a bunch of letters scrambled together. I'm gonna count down from 10, and then it is on your honor, so I'm trusting all of you, all right? This is a big deal. Trusting all of you, to be honest. If you can guess what it is correctly in 10 seconds, you stay standing. If you don't, take a seat, all right? Can I trust you all, Ground Zero? Oh, I can trust you, yeah, for 100%. All right, here we go. First Christmas movie, 10 seconds, I'm gonna count down. All right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. The answer is Grinch. All right, if you got it, stay standing. If you didn't, take a seat. I'm gonna move it down to five seconds because you're all really smart. I forgot how smart you all are, okay? So here we go, five seconds. That's all you get. Next one. Five, four, three, two, one. What's the answer? Home Alone. All right, if you got it, stay standing. If you didn't, take a seat. About three people take a seat every time. You're just all smart, and I knew it. Okay, next one. Oh, that one was so fast. I didn't even, I needed half a second to get that one. All right. Uh, elf. It was Elf. Oh, okay. All right. Next one. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Answer is Polar Express. If you got it, stay standing. If you didn't, take a seat. That one was tough. That one was tough. All right. Uh, let's do one more like this. Five, four, three, two, one. Answer is Christmas Carol. If you got that, stay standing. If you didn't, Take a seat. All right, raise your hand if you're still in. All right, that's the people I know not to trust because there's no way you got it. No, I'm joking, I trust you. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna invite a couple people up on stage. Let's go, yeah, you right here. In the back, yes. Uh, right there jumping. Uh, right there, yes. And sure, you are in, yeah. Okay, yeah, fine, you're in too. Yeah, you come on up too, fine. Everyone, bring, yeah, you're in. I just like people up on stage. I like having friends. Okay. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. There's a bunch of people up on here, so I can't get to know you all tonight, but you all matter, and I'm thankful that you're up here. But when you get it, when you figure out what the scramble is on the screen, just yell it out. First person to yell it out correctly gets a point, all right? So here we go. Uh, you can look at the side screens. Make sure you can see the side screens. Step to where you can see the side screens. Here we go. First person to yell it out correctly. Oh, we got right here, Santa Claus. It is Santa Claus. All right, one point for Oscar. Unless someone down here, did they beat him? Yeah, oh, is he fast? Close. It was I'm, close. Okay, you help me. Yeah, you got to listen down there. All right, I'm going one point Oscar right here. All right, next one. Oh, right there. Christmas story. All right, one point right here. One and one. Here we go. Next one. Oh, this, <laughs> this trick is to listen to the audience. They're good at this. All right. Uh, all right, we got one, one, one. Here we go. Next one. Die hard. We got Did you hear it right down there? She got it. She got yeah. it down there. No, she got it. Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman. All right. Well done. We got one, 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 one. This is only going to get more complicated. Here we go. We'll do another one. Was 
this one is tricky. Does the audience know? Anyone in the audience? <laughs> this is your moment. It's all random. No, I don't think. <laughs> definitely not. That. As uh, they're, uh, they're phoning a friend for help. Audience, audience help. Did anyone know? Yell it out. You got to listen. No, you got to hear it. You got to hear it. Keep yelling it. Maybe they'll hear it. Whoever. Oh, okay. I'm going to give it to Oscar, I think. What? Trading Places. Is that a Christmas movie? Do you know what that is? I, no. Does anyone know that Never Christmas know. movie? Okay, Oscar, I'm giving him two. Sorry, you just got lucky, all right? You... Luck is luck. All right, hey, we'll do one more. We'll give one more chance for someone to make... Oh, man. I heard... I heard Oscar pretty fast. Okay, Aiden, I'll give you. I'm giving you. That's fine, Brian. All right. Hey, I'm going to end it there. Oscar, my man, I'm going to give it to you, okay? I think I was standing close. I'm sorry if you didn't get a fair chance. Noah, do you think I did it fairly? Yeah, no. Okay, I, I, Noah's going to give me a thumbs up. Oscar, the rest of you can take a seat, but just I want you to know you are Christmas champions. Walk, walk to your seat. Make everyone around you call you a Christmas champion, all right, Oscar? This is for you. It's an Amazon gift card with a Christmas total on it, whatever that means. Yeah, it's just enough to buy you the Christmas gift you've always wanted. <laughs> okay. Grunt Zero, we got two announcements. They're both really important, so we got to listen up. Are you with me? You're with me? All right, here we go. First one is after the new year, we are doing a brand new series called Got Questions. And part of that series is having you all turn in your questions to us. So there's going to be a QR code that comes up on the screen right there. So take your phones out if you've got one right now. Go ahead and take your phone out. If you don't have a phone, no worries. We got you covered. We got cards in your small group. So if you don't have a phone, no worries. You can take a picture if you want. That QR code is good after this too. But the whole point of this series is for you to ask your questions here in church. We care about the questions you have, the things you're trying to figure out, like the hard things in your life, the things you've heard in the Bible or read or heard from us on stage to just make you go like, I don't what? Like, I don't quite get it. I want to know more. I've heard this thing that somebody told me and I don't quite get it. Uh, we just want you to know as a church, this is a place you can ask those questions. Like, this is where we work out what all that means. Like, ask the hard questions, figure out how to have a conversation around it. I want you to know that you never have to, to feel like you gotta keep a question secret. This is not a place where you gotta be afraid of, of having doubts, afraid of having questions. You can always talk uh, to your small group leader, to me. I'm a person you can talk with if you want to. I'm always here for you. So come talk with me if you got questions. I'd love to do that stuff. I'd love to pray for you too. So if you want prayer ever again, I'm your pastor. So I'm here for you every single week. But take a picture Follow the link to that QR code. If you don't have a phone, we got cards for you in small group. And your leaders are actually going to take a little bit of time in group to talk through those questions and just say, hey, do you have questions? Like, let's help figure out what you want to ask us. And then Mark is going to answer like 5,000 questions in the next couple weeks after the new year. So give them as many as you can and the hardest ones you can because otherwise Mark's job will be too easy, all right? So give them the hardest questions you got. All right, the second announcement I've got to talk about is, again, who loves Christmas? Anyone excited about Christmas in here? Okay, good. This next announcement is for you. Next week is Festival of Festiveness. And if you wonder what happens in Festival of Festiveness, there's going to be a video that shows some stuff happening behind me. We have a ton of fun. We dress up. Again, remember, dress up. You've got like seven days to make it happen. If you don't sleep at all, if you don't eat, if you use all of your time making a costume, that should give you just enough time to make the perfect costume to show up with on Festival of Festiveness, all right? So show up with a great costume. You can do a group costume if you want. Like if you want to make Santa and all the reindeer with your friends, do it. That'd be awesome. Uh, but dress up. Go all out. This is the time to do it. Uh, we have hot chocolate. Everyone who shows up is going to get free hot chocolate. Uh, we are going to have fun Christmas games. You're going to have Christmas small groups. So if you love Christmas, this is your day. This is your day to show up and have fun. But it's not just for you. Festival is not just for you. If you have enjoyed anything we do here at Ground Zero, this Christmas festival fun thing we do is a great opportunity to invite friends. Like if you're like, hey, do you like to have fun? And your friend's like, yeah. You're like, you know what? You would love this thing we're doing at church. It's called Festival of Festiveness. Show up, dress up, have fun with me. Wear like even just a red or green t-shirt that qualifies you. Uh, but this is a great opportunity for you to invite your friends into what we do here. And I want to challenge all of you. You get to be a part of that mission. If you have been here for a little while, even if you're brand new, but you have valued this place, bring a friend with you next week. All right. Can you do that, Grand Zero? Bring friends. All right, I want to see every seat in this place packed. I want to be having people have to sit outside and watch it in the cold because there are so many people in this building we can't even have space for everyone, all right? So that means each of you is going to have to invite 25 friends. That's it. That's no, just a little ask of you, all right? No, hey, Ground Zero. In just a second, Mark is going to come out and share an awesome message with you guys. Again, please don't be a distraction. Don't be distracted. Check out this video and then welcome Mark when he comes out. Love you, Ground Zero. Good to be with you. Zero back to
What's up, Ground Zero? We got some energy at Lionel Lakes tonight, which is great. Hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Mark. I am your middle school teaching pastor. Welcome to everybody across all of our campuses. Hello to anybody who's watching on YouTube. We love our friends who watch along on YouTube, don't we? Can we make some noise for them? Come on. So we see you. Let us know that you're watching. I don't know, maybe put uh, what you want for Christmas in the chat. You know, I'll take a look at that. That's kind of fun. Uh, But hey, tonight we are wrapping up our series. Speaking of presents, we're just wrapping up a series tonight. See what I did there? That was was pretty good. We're wrapping up our series called Choose Your Character, where we've been talking about how to build our character God's way. And character isn't really about what's on the outside, what we look like, our appearance, that kind of stuff. Character is about what's going on on the inside. We've been using this definition right here. Character is who you really are and how you really act. And God has some ideas about who we should really be and how we should really act. And tonight, what we're adding to our character is this right here, kindness. I'm pumped to talk about kindness tonight, but first I have a question. We've been talking a lot about video games these last few weeks. Do any of you play a little video game called Rocket League? Any Rocket League fans out there? So this is Rocket League right here. That's actually me playing. Look at that. Oh, that was spicy. Did you see that aerial? That was like one of my best aerials right there. Uh, So you drive around in a car, and look at this. Woo! Ricochet right there. And you try to score a goal. It's one of my all-time favorite video games. And yes, I will 1v1 you, and yes, I will beat you. Okay. (laughs) Actually, I'm pretty trash at that game, but... I enjoy playing it, and that's what really counts, okay? But hey, in Rocket League, the way that you chat with other players, you pre-pick these phrases that you can say during the game. And one of those phrases is this right here. What a save! Now, this is a really kind thing to say to someone when, I don't know, you make a nice shot, they block it, you're like, what a save. Or opposite, you make a nice block on a good shot from them, and they say, what a save. That's really kind. That's really nice, right? There's just one problem. That's not usually how people use this phrase in the game. Usually, they use this phrase as a taunt. So what happens is, they will come down, they will score on you, and the next thing you know, this pops up. What a save. What a save. What a save. This happens to me all the time. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And when this happens, oh man, it gets me, all right? I get mad. I will like sit up on my couch and I will get really close to the TV and I will like until I can score on them and then I can be like, what a save, what a save, what a save, right back at them. Okay, it's bad. I'm not perfect, you guys, okay? God is still working on me, all right? But look, the the truth is, is that even when I play Rocket League, I have a choice to be kind or to be not so kind. And the reality is every day that we wake up and spend another day living on planet Earth, we have a choice to make. Are we going to be kind or are we going to be not so kind? Every single day we have that choice. And I think that God wants us to choose to be kind. But I don't think God just wants us to be kind a few times, to just do a few nice things here or there. I think God wants kindness to be at the core of who we are. Who we really are should be kind. What we really do should be kind things for people around us. And God cares so much about that. Here's how I know this. In the book of Luke, Jesus was teaching a group of people about how they should treat other people. And he tells a story that I think has something to teach us about kindness. Let's take a look at it. Jesus said a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes They beat him up, and they left him half dead beside the road. So this man's traveling from one place to another. He gets robbed, he gets beat up, and they leave him for the vultures. But somebody comes along. Jesus says this, by chance, a priest came along. 
But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. Now, if anybody should have been kind to this man on the side of the road, it it should have been a priest. I mean, a priest is, is kind of a fancy name for a pastor, but these were educated religious leaders that knew more about God than the average person. So if anyone should have known what God wanted them to do, it it, it was a priest, and yet he goes by and shows no compassion, no kindness. And then somebody else comes along. Jesus says this. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there. So he at least walked over and looked at him, but he also passed by on the other side. Now, a temple assistant was kind of like a worship leader in that time. They helped out with the religious activities that happened at the temple. So again, somebody that that knows God and should know what God wants them to do passes by. He is O for two. There's one more. There's one more guy that comes walking along. Jesus says, then a despised Samaritan came along. Now, hold up. We need to pause here for a second. We hit the brakes. I don't know if you noticed this, but Jesus actually gave us the nationality of these two men, the one that was lying on the side of the road and the traveler, the third guy that was coming by. The man on the side of the road was Jewish, and the man that came by was a despised Samaritan. Here's the deal about that. This is an important detail in the story, because Jews and Samaritans, they did not get along. They were not friends in any sense of the word. It's kind of like how... I don't know, Vikings and Packers fans don't get along, but like times a thousand, okay? Jews looked down on Samaritans, and Samaritans hated Jews back. This was a social, it was a racial feud that was way back in their history. So if anybody was going to stop and show kindness to a Jewish man on the side of the road, it was not a Samaritan man. What you might have expected a Samaritan man to do would be to walk up, Maybe scoff at him like, he got what he deserved. Maybe even, I don't know, kick some dirt on him or something. But that's not what happens. Look what Jesus says. He says, the spy Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine, and he bandaged them. And he doesn't just clean him up and leave him there. Look, he he put him on his own donkey. He took him to an inn where he took care of him. And the next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. This was an unexpected act of kindness from an unexpected hero. It's not who they would have expected to help. And after Jesus tells us this story, he just simply gives us this challenge. Now go and do the same. That's the challenge Jesus is giving each of us. Just like that Samaritan man showed kindness, we should too. And so from the story tonight, I just want to pull two truths out about kindness and how we can live our lives like this Samaritan man. And the first one is simply this. Kindness is for everyone. It really was no mistake that Jesus picked a Samaritan man to be the hero, to be the one that stepped up and helped. And I think what Jesus is trying to teach us is that the choice to be kind, it isn't about who's on the other side of that kindness. We're not called to just be nice to the people that we like. God doesn't tell us to just be kind to people that, I don't know, can maybe help us become more popular or give us more influence. The challenge is to be kind to everyone. And you know what's interesting? Sometimes the animal kingdom actually gets this right when we as human beings, much higher than animals, we don't even get it right. Here's what I'm talking about. My wife and I, we watched this movie a while ago called The Biggest Little Farm. 
And it's about this couple that's trying to create a 200-acre farm outside of Los Angeles, California. And so you see all these stories of their animals and crops and all the things that they're doing. And I wanted to introduce you to two characters from the biggest little farm. These are real animals, okay? This is Emma the pig and Greasy the rooster. Greasy, I mean, you can kind of tell, right? He's pretty greasy, And Emma the pig just chilling there. That's a big pig. All right, so they formed an unlikely friendship on this farm. Because what happened was Greasy was being mistreated by the chickens in the coop. This happens with chickens. They they establish what's called a pecking order. And if you're on the bottom of that pecking order, you literally get pecked. And they literally kicked him out of the coop, which left him exposed to all kinds of predators like wolves and and coyotes that oftentimes get late night cravings for chicken nuggets, all right? So Greasy's just left out in the cold that night, and then he meets Emma, the pig. And Emma invites Greasy in every night. This is what she does. She roots around in in her little hay uh, inside of her pig hut. She makes a bed, she lays down, And then Greasy makes his way in and cuddles up right beside of her. And at night, they sleep under the same roof. And Greasy is safe because no animal is going to go try to, you know, challenge a thousand pound boar, right? Isn't that amazing? And here's the point, all right? If, If a pig, if a pig can be kind to a rooster, a greasy rooster. (laughs) If a Samaritan can be kind to a Jewish man, don't you think that we can be kind to somebody that we don't like? Somebody that might have a different opinion than we do, someone who might have a different personality than we do, or, or even this, all right, get this, this might be a little bit hard to hear, but even someone who is mean to us, what about that? I think we can do it. Instead of trying to get revenge, we can just choose to be kind. What Jesus is teaching us in this story is that kindness is for everyone, and especially, especially for people that the world would never expect us to be kind to. And I love that about Jesus. All right, here's the second truth about kindness. Kindness will cost you something. So if we can go back to the story about the Samaritan and the Jewish man for a second. After he cleans him up, he bandages his wounds. Let's see again what happened in that story. Jesus said, then he put the man on his own donkey and he took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time that I'm here. So this Samaritan put him up on his donkey and he put him up in an inn. Both things that cost him something. By putting him up on his donkey, that meant that he literally had to walk the rest of the way, sacrifice his comfort, his ride to the inn and let this man take it instead. And then by putting him up in an inn, he was sacrificing his time. It said he took care of him. It said that that he paid for his stay. Two silver coins was about two days wages in that time. So it's hundreds of dollars today. And then not only that, he doesn't just pay for a night. He says, look, if there's any other expenses, if he like racks up a massive room service bill, like I got him. All right. I'll pay for it when I get back. It cost him his comfort. It cost him his time. It cost him Money, And I think what Jesus is teaching us in this story is that kindness isn't always easy. It's not always convenient. Sometimes it, it's going to cost us something, being kind to someone else. But that it's so worth it because of how it helps somebody else. So I got to tell you this story about a time where something that I did uh, out of the kindness of my heart ended up costing me quite a bit. So it was back when I was in college, and I was driving, I was in Maplewood, 
Minnesota, or no, I was in Maple Grove. There's so many maples. No, I was in Maplewood. I was in Maplewood, Minnesota. And as I turned in the traffic light, I saw a guy standing on the side of the street and he had a cardboard sign in his hands and it said, anything helps. And in that moment, God just kind of moved in my heart and said, hey, you should go and you should ask that man if you can do something for him. And so I parked my car, I got out, I walked up to him, asked him what his name was. His name was Hippie. I thought that was kind of interesting, but... And I said, hey, can I buy you some dinner? There's a Taco Bell right here. I'll, I'll get you some tacos. And he said, you know what? I, I'm actually not that hungry, but there is really something I need, and that is a ride. And I was like, oh, man. I just kind of wanted to buy this guy some tacos and like be on my way. <laughs> but he needed a ride. And I said, where do you need to go? He said, I need to go to Maple Grove, which is about 40 minutes away. And I was like, okay, I think I have time. I have to work a little bit later, but I can give him a ride. And so I said, sure, hop in. Now, Pause, side note, I'm not saying pick up every random stranger on the side of the road and that's how you show kindness, okay? You, you can't just do that all the time. You, you gotta be safe, all right? But maybe against my better judgment, I was like, yep, hop in. And so he hops in and we start driving to Maple Grove and I start to get to know him a little bit. He tells me his story. And on our way to Maple Grove, we're almost there and he sees a Walmart. And he's like, can we go to Walmart? Uh, I'd like to pick up some stuff. And I was like, I mean, I'm, God, I'm already giving you a ride. Like, now you want to go to Walmart too? Sure. I mean, I guess. So we hop out. And what happened next was the most random shopping spree at Walmart that I've ever been a part of, okay? I mean, he got some stuff that he, like, obviously needed, some hygiene project, uh, products and that kind of stuff. But then he, he was like, can I buy a stereo? I'm like, what in the world do you need a stereo for? He wanted a boombox. That's what we used to call it. So he got this, this stereo, and, and he got a bunch of CDs, and then, of course, he didn't have a way to plug it in, and so we bought, like, 20D batteries, you know, that you had to put in it. And, and I just got him all this stuff, and I was like, all right, that, I'm happy to do this for you. And so we went back to the car, and I was just kind of, like, ready to, you know, send him off and, and get on with my day, get back and go to work. And so I said, where do you want to get dropped off? And he said, Burger King. I said, great. So we pull into the Burger King parking lot, prayed for him. He hops out of my car. And this is where things get really crazy. <laughs> All of a sudden, we hear screaming. I'm like, what in the world is that? He's kind of looking at me. I don't know. And we realize that it's not like angry screaming. It's not like yelling. It's somebody who is pumped. Like, they are excited. They're like, woo! Yeah! We're like, what in the world is this? Yeah! <laughs> I kid you not, I turn around and look, and who comes running out of the Burger King? It's another homeless guy. He runs up to my van, he hops in the front seat. He looks at me, this is what he says. I knew Jesus was going to send me a ride. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, when I saw that other guy get out of your car, I knew this was my ride. I've been in Burger King praying that God would send me a ride. How do you say no to that, you guys? I'm like, sure, I guess. I mean, I'm going to be late for work. Where do you need to go? He's like, Miami, Florida. I'm just kidding. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. He says, St. Paul, which is kind of back in the other direction. I was like, all right, what's going on? He, he had a doctor's appointment. He had missed it a number of times because he didn't have a ride. But today he was convinced that God was going to send him a ride. And guess what? I got to be that ride for this guy. And I drove him to St. Paul and I got him to his doctor's appointment. And he was just pumped, which was so awesome, you guys. It was so awesome to be an answer to someone else's prayer because of a moment of kindness. Where God stirred in my heart to just be kind to somebody and, and what it led to. <laughs> Here's the deal. Kindness matters, you guys. And yeah, it might cost you something. It might cost you a little bit of time, some energy, some money. It might cost you some, some influence. It might cost you some popularity at school. But it's worth it. It's so worth it. And I'm not saying that every time you do something kind, it's going to be that level of a story, okay? Because that's just not the case. But you never know, ground zero, you never know when your kindness 
might be the answer to someone else's prayer. You never know. Somebody might be saying, God, I feel so alone. I feel like nobody sees me. And then that day, your smile, your wave answers that prayer to God for somebody to notice that. You never know when somebody might be crying out to God saying, I feel so alone, I have no friends. And then later that day, your kindness invites them into your circle. Say, hey, we've never met before. Where do you live? What do you do? What are you into? And you became the answer to that prayer. You never know when your kindness might be the answer to someone else's prayer. Yeah, it might cost you something, but it's worth it. God wants to use your kindness to impact others. So just like Jesus said, go and do the same. I want to end with two questions. First one is simply this. Who do you need to be kind to? What's God saying to you right now? Who's that person, that group, someone in your family? Kindness is for everyone. Second, what's one act of kindness you will do this week, even if it costs you something? Pray about it. Ask God to give you an opportunity and then do it. One kind thing that every single one of us can do is invite somebody to the best Christmas party of the year next week, Festival of Festiveness. All right, let me pray. God, thank you for this amazing story. Thank you for this example of kindness, of compassion. Thank you for this Samaritan that went out of his way to help somebody who, who he shouldn't have helped, who he didn't need to help, who the world didn't expect him to help. And yet he did it out of the kindness of his heart and it ended up saving that man's life. God, I wonder what our kindness could do for the people around us, the people in our family, the students at our school, the students on our teams, the students in our activities. God, what could our kindness accomplish? I believe you want to use it. I believe you want kindness to be at the core of who we are. And so I pray that you would help us to go out from this place and be kind and trust you to use it in awesome ways. Thank you for every single one of these students who's here tonight. I just pray for them. That you'd be with them. That you'd use them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. I will see you next week. A festival of festiveness. Peace.